Today I'm going to give you a demo of the great book template from Vertex42. When you download these templates, there's actually three different files. The one you see here is the gradebook points file. This uses a grading system that is based off point values. There's also available a percentage based one and a GPA based template. Simply select the one that fits the grading style or grading method that is used at your school. So one of the first things you want to do is simply put in the information for the course. So in this case, world history. I'm going to come down here. Bob Jones is teaching that in room 200 at 10 a.m. Now the next thing to do in order to set up the gradebook is to go ahead and put in the names of your students. Student names are actually entered on the names tab, not here on the main gradebook page. Simply go to names and then you'll see a master list here. With each name is also associated an ID number. This ID number can be used to mask the names of the students when posting grades so that students can check up on their scores. So to do that, it's pretty easy. You just come down here and add the names that you need to. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add um, a Cami, and you're just going to give them a random number. Um, in this case, we're going up by twos. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, a Taryn at 158. I'm going to put in a Peter, 160. I'm going to put in a John W at 162 and I'm going to put in a Joseph at 164. So now that I've got my list of students, just a couple points here to keep in mind. In this case, I did not alphabetize the names and so I could use increasing ID numbers. Now if you decide to alphabetize the names, it'd be better to assign random ID numbers and then sort the list based off those ID numbers um, so that the students can't figure out the list it's also important not to change the order of the names once you start entering scores into the grade sheet. You can always add additional names at the bottom, but you should not modify the order. So now that I've finished entering names, I'm going to go back to the gradebook. And what I want to do is just double check to make sure I have enough rows in my list. So now I have 31 students, but I'm only seeing the first 30 students. In order to add additional rows, simply select any of the numbered rows here. In this case, left click on it, then you're going to right click, go to copy, and then you need to insert the row anywhere within this region. The only thing you need to make sure of is that you do it above the final row. So in this case, I'm just going to come down here, I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to right click and go to insert copied cells. You'll notice that once I inserted the row, the numbering and the names automatically updated according to the master name list. Now I'm going to just go ahead and delete all this dummy data so that I'm ready to go. And then the final thing that I need to do to set up my grade sheet for the year is to put in my assignments. It comes pre-filled out with a number of homework and exams. So let's go ahead and add maybe one or two more assignments. Again, I'm going to copy and insert uh, entire columns this time. Let's say I'm going to do a midterm exam. I'm going to copy this row. Just left click on it, right click, go to copy, and then you're going to come over here and I'm going to paste it right here in the timeline, roughly, insert copied cells. I went ahead and I'm just going to call this one. I'm going to delete that, call it midterm. Then I need to assign a point value. In this case, I want it to be worth um, 200 points, the same as the final, so it becomes a significant portion of their grade. And then maybe there's one more assignment. Um, let's copy that one again. Left click, copy. I'm going to paste it towards the end. At the end of the year, they've got a, a paper due. I'm going to go ahead and insert the copy cells. And I'm going to put uh, written paper. And I'm going to have that one also be worth 200 points. Now that I've got all the assignments entered in and I've got all the student names entered in for the class, I can start entering in grades. So all we do is as the assignments are graded is we put in the number of points that they achieved out of the total possible. So in this case, I'm going to go with uh, 47 points and then 45 points. And you're just basically going to fill this out as you do your grading. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in some numbers. As long as I stay under 50, I'm doing OK. Now, of course, this is all just made up. Maybe I'm a really hard teacher and there's some tens in here. Or... Now let's say I have a student who missed a particular assignment. You have a couple options there. If they missed it, you can just simply skip it, 
come back and fill it out later. As long as that's blank, that assignment will not be calculated into their score. Now if they've got an excused assignment and are not going to be making it up and you want to just make sure there's something there, go ahead and put an E in there for excused. Again, that will not be used to calculate their score, but it will have a placeholder in it so you don't worry about missing scores. But then let's say somebody did miss something and you really are going to basically give them a zero on it because they've refused to make it up, then you can put a zero in there. And as soon as you do that, they will receive a zero and that will be calculated into their score. And just going to head finish up here. All right, now I'm done entering scores for that assignment. Down here at the bottom, there's some statistics for the assignments. Basically, you get the class average plus the percentages. So we're doing a 66% here. Uh, it shows you the median, also standard deviation for that assignment. This way you can look at individual assignments, figure out if perhaps it was a little too difficult or too easy, and make adjustments if needed. Off to the right, you also have the grade for each student. And what's nice about that is you can come in here and see at any given point how the students are doing. And it will basically, as you add assignment values, it will update the running totals and the running percents. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some more information here, and I'll come back and show you a couple other things here. All right, so I went ahead and entered in the first four homework assignments and the first exam. I wanted to show you how the display IDs feature worked here. So if you remember back on the names tab, we gave each student an ID. And let's say after the first exam, we want to post the scores. All you need to do is come over here to display IDs, go ahead and click it. And you'll notice that the names are replaced with the IDs from the names tab. And this way you can print it out, post it up on a bulletin board, whatever you want to do to, to share that with the students and still preserve privacy. But in order to do the grading, it's definitely going to be easier if I can turn it off so that I can see names to match up scores to the individuals. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in some more data and uh, come back and show you a few more things. I went ahead and put in grades for the rest of the assignments. If I scroll over to the right here, you can see the total number of points for each student and their percentage and a letter grade. In order to modify the grading scale, go to the Grades tab. Over here, you'll see the grading scale as it's currently defined. You'll see a histogram or distribution of how the scores are distributed in the class. There's also some class statistics down at the bottom showing you percentiles, averages, medians, and standard deviations. So one thing you can do to adjust the grading scale is simply modify the minimums or the grades depending on the systems that are used at your school. So in this case, maybe we use an 88% here, and you'll notice that it will automatically recalculate the A and the A plus values, or I can simply go ahead and define this as being 94% if I want and this one being 96%. It's really up to you. So once I've got this defined, I can look at the histogram chart here to see how the class curve is doing. Now in this case, since I'm a really hard teacher and it's made up data, you can see that I've kind of skewed my class down in the C range. So what I can actually do is I can go ahead and grade on a curve and without having to modify this, I can go back to the grade book, go up to the curve tab here so let's say I want to raise everybody's score by 10%. Now I'm getting some A's and I can go back to grades and check out the distribution chart to see where my grades are now following. I can again go back, let's say we, that's maybe too much, do it at 8% and I can get that chart again updated so I can see where those distributions are. Once I'm done, I've got all my grades reported. I can go ahead and display those to everybody by again clicking on display IDs, printing out the sheet and distributing that or posting that where everybody has access to it.